man. I looked at one of them, didn't I? Oh. I guess I'll just try to possibly possibly cut that phone call out. Oh, hold on. Okay, that's the end of the phone call, and I think I'll probably just maybe give up looking for my base at this point, because I've been looking for a pretty long time. I cut that out. It's weird hearing these Enderman sounds. Try to attack him here. Doesn't do much to him, though. Oh, looks like there's an ender, ender crystal still up on this tower. Let's try to, like, aim it up so it just hits down at it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Only we could just find our base and use the water bucket to get up, but no. It's just too lost. Let's try to hit it from here. Maybe a little higher? I think it's going too high. Come on, why isn't it working? Finally, that did a little bit of damage to him too. Meanwhile, I need to regen. Probably should have brought more baked potatoes. So, let's be ready to attack him whenever he comes. He's charging in. By the way, I'm going to take off the coordinates to see how much health he has. We actually only need those if we actually find our base. Pretty good for now. I totally underestimated the amount of big potatoes I needed. Let's see if we can hit him with a bow. That did quite a lot of damage. Maybe if we can kill him, we don't need to find our way to the base. Is one of them mad at me now? Where's the Enderman? Just teleporting around randomly. And, come on. Okay, got another hit on it. Oh no, I should not have... I should really be wearing my hair again. Okay, now the Endermen have a better chance of not... not getting mad at me. Now, where's that Ender Dragon? only do just a small amount of damage to him when he actually charges. And let's try this again. I think 
he got two hits on him in this time. Now, where's the Ender Dragon? Come on. Where is he? Oh man, wish I didn't have to wear this pumpkin. And, however, oh, well, I think he was right there. Can, however, do this. F1. And now I have a better chance of seeing him. Probably should have done this a long time ago. Gets rid of the HUD or heads up display at the bottom. Unfortunately, this also gets rid of the Ender Dragon's health, so let's just put that back. He got a few hits on me there. Let's use our bow this time and try to aim at him. It's hard to aim, though, where you can't see the crosshair. Let's aim while he's charging. You can tell I have my bow in hand because I'm going pretty slowly. No. Let's try the sword. I know you can't see the sword. We also can't see our health though. And we need to eat. Hopefully the Ender Dragon will go down before we do. Ah, didn't get him. Looks like he's at about half health though. Which is good. Okay, looks like he's right there. Let's track him. Let's get ready to shoot him. Come on, where is he? I think I was too too late there on that shot. Okay, just a little bit down there, but we're making progress. Got two hits on him there. That's good. Let's get ready for the Ender Dragon to. Where is he? Right there, you just disappeared out of range. Now, where is he now? Come on. Getting nervous here. I just come up from behind me. Like that. Oh. I thought I was going to use my sword there, but I ended up using cobblestone to punch him. Wonder if I should take off this pumpkin. Let's take off the pumpkin. They've got a decent amount of damage. Okay, he's almost down. Almost down. Let's hold on tight. Let's regenerate our health. Because he does a lot of damage. We're pretty good now. 
don't have the ender crystals interfering anymore. I was taking them all out. Huh, I ended up punching him with cobblestone again. Did I look at a massive amount of them? I must have looked at a massive amount of endermen. Strangely, they're not mad. He's almost down. He's almost down. Uh, didn't get any hits on him that time. When he charges, I gotta be ready with my bow. Probably going to be the last hit on him. I'm really excited. We're, we're gonna get to beat the game. Final battle. Come on. Come at me, bro. Yes! Woo! shower of XP will rain down upon me. Now, before I enter the portal, I wanted to collect the Ender Dragon's egg as a trophy. Let's, let's stack up to the portal. And I think that this isn't actually when you destroy it, it sort of teleports somewhere else. Hmm. So where did it go? I heard it go... I think I saw it go this way. Come on, where is it? Is it somewhere down here? Hmm. I think I saw it teleport somewhere in this direction. Hmm. Come on. Where's the egg? Just like when we lost the base. We lost the egg too. Looks like there's still a bit of XP. So, come on, where is the egg? Is it atop one of these towers? It might be, now that I think about it. It's pretty safe to go up here, since there's no ender dragon now. Can't actually destroy this fire. Interesting. So, where is the Ender Dragon Egg? Hmm. I was pretty sure I saw it teleport somewhere in this direction. If it's not up here, I don't know where it could be. Anyway, let's mine our way back down. If only we had that water bucket some point I should eat my last two baked potatoes. Oh. That fire aspect sure should do good to make him ignore me. You know, maybe it's somewhere down here. Did teleport in this direction. 
in this general area. We should we should mine down and see. Probably best to be careful though. Yeah, I shouldn't be digging straight down. Let's just see. Is it down here? I really wanted to collect that so that I could frame it instead of my diamond pickaxe. Maybe I should dig out a little bit more in this direction. Come on. This is just endless. Okay, we're here. Now, is the egg down here? It appears not. Just teleported to somewhere random. Hmm. Well, let's just go stack up back to the top, I guess. Just go and do this a little bit. Hmm. Wait, there's the egg. It, uh, hmm. I guess I'm sort of dumb for not noticing that anymore. But anyway, I think. I read somewhere, maybe on the Minecraft wiki, that how you collect it is you put a torch under it and let it fall onto the torch. There. It's the dragon egg. Alright. Now, let's head through the portal. First, let's take out the pumpkin. And, let's go through. Achievement get. The end. Alright. By the way, if you don't want any spoilers to the end of Minecraft, then you should probably skip this part. Because this is the end of Minecraft. So, let's see. Waiting. Waiting. I see the player you mean. Mr. Miner 25 yes, that is my username. Yes, take care. It has reached a higher level now. It can read our thoughts. That doesn't matter. Thinks we are part of the game. I like this player. It played well. It did not give up. I think it says this for everybody, though. It is reading our thoughts as though they were words on a screen. And they are words on a screen. That is how it chooses to imagine many things when it's deep in the dream of a game. Words make a wonderful interface, very flexible, and less terrifying than staring at the reality behind the screen. They used to hear voices, before players could read, back in the days when those who did not play called the players witches and warlocks, and players dreamed they flew through the air on sticks powered by demons. <laughs> what did this player dream? This player dreamed of sunlight and trees, of fire and water. It dreamed it created, and it dreamed it destroyed. It dreamed it hunted, and was hunted. It dreamed of shelter. Ha! The original interface, a million years old, and it still works. But what true structure did this player create in the reality behind the screen? It worked with a million others to sculpt a true world in the f fold of the gibberish, and create it gibberish. It cannot read that thought. No, it has not yet achieved the highest level. That it must achieve in the long dream of life, not the short dream of a game. Does it know that we love it, that the universe is kind? Sometimes, through the noise of its thoughts, it hears the universe, yes. But there are times it is sad in the long dream. 
It creates worlds that have no summer, and it shivers under the black sun. And it takes its sad creation for reality. To cure it of sorrow would destroy it. The sorrow is part of its own private task. We cannot interfere. Sometimes when they are deep in dreams, I want to tell them they are building true worlds in reality. Sometimes I want to tell them of their importance to the universe. Sometimes when they have not made a true connection in a while, I want to help them to speak the word they fear. It reads our thoughts. Sometimes we do not care. Sometimes I wish to tell them this word you take for truth is merely blah and blah. I wish to tell them that they are blah blah and not blah blah. They say so little of reality in their long dream, and yet they play the game. But it would be so easy to tell them. Too strong for this dream. To tell them how to live is to prevent them living. I will not tell the player how to live. The player is growing restless. I will tell the player a story, but not the truth. No, a story that contains the truth safely, in a cage of words, not the naked truth that can burn over any distance. Give it a body again. Yes, player. That's me. Use its name. Wait a minute. Mr. Minor 25, that is my username. Player of games. Good. I think this is actually two people. Because one is in blue and blue is green. Take a breath now. Take another. Feel air in your lungs. Let your limbs return. Yes, move your fingers. Have a body again. Under gravity and air. Respawn in the long dream. There you are. Your body touching the universe again at every point. As though you're separate things. As though we were separate things. Who are we? Once we were called the spirit of the mountain. Father, son, father, moon. Ancestral spirits, animal spirits. Jinn, ghosts. The green man, then gods, demons, angels, pulled to guys, aliens, extraterrestrials. Let pawn scorks, the world's change, we do not change. We are the universe. We are everything you think isn't you. You are looking at us now through your skin and your eyes. And why does the universe touch your skin and throw light on you? To see you, player. To know you and to be known. I shall tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a player. That player was you. I'm just going to say the pickaxe of diamonds for now. Sometimes it thought itself human on the thin crust of a spinning globe of molten rock. The ball of molten rock sold to a ball of blazing gas that was 330,000 times more massive than it. They were so far apart that light took 8 minutes to cross the gap. The light was information from a star and it could burn in your skin from 150 million kilometers away. I'm reading fast because the text is going away. Sometimes the player dreamed it was a miner on the surface of a world that was flat and infinite. The sun was a square of light. The days were short. There was much to do and death was a temporary inconvenience. Sometimes the player dreamed it was lost in a story. Sometimes the player dreamed it was other things in other places. Sometimes these dreams were disturbing. Sometimes very beautiful indeed. Sometimes the player woke from one dream into another. Then woke from that into a third. Sometimes the player dreamed it watched words on a screen. <laughs> Let's go back. The atoms of the player were scattered in the grass, in the rivers, in the air, in the ground. A woman gathered the atoms. She drank and ate and inhaled. And the woman assembled the player in her body. And the player woke from the warm dark world of its mother body into the long dream. And the player was a new story, never told before, written in letters of DNA. And the player was a new program, never run before, generated by a source code a billion years old. And the player was a new human, never alive before, made from nothing but milk and love. You are the player, the story, the program, the human, made from nothing but <laughs> milk and love. <laughs> Let's go further back. The seven billion 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 atoms of the player's body were created, long before this game, in the heart of a star. So the player, too, is information from a star. And the player moves through a story, which is a forest of information planted by a man called Julian on a flat, infinite world created by a man called Mar Marcus, a.k.a. Notch, that exists inside a small private world created by the player who inhabits the universe created by Shush. Sometimes the player created a small private world that was soft and warm and simple, sometimes hard and cold and complicated. Sometimes it built a model of the universe in its head, flecks of energy, moving through vast empty spaces. Sometimes it called those flecks electrons and protons. Sometimes it called them planets and stars. Sometimes it believed that it was in the universe that it was made of energy, that it was made of offs and ons, zeros and ones, lines of code. Sometimes it believed that it was playing games. Sometimes it believed it was reading words on the screen. You are the player, reading words. Shush. Sometimes the player read lines of code on a screen, decoded them into words, decoded words into meaning, decoded meaning into feelings, emotions, theories, ideas, and the player started to breathe faster and deeper and realize he was alive. He was alive. Those thousand deaths that had not been real. The player was alive. You. You. 
you're alive. And sometimes the player believed the universe had spoken to it through the sunlight that came through the shuffling leaves of the summer trees. And sometimes the player believed the universe had spoken to it through the light that fell from the crisp night sky of winter, where a fleck of light in the corner of the player's eye might be a star a million times as massive as the sun, boiling his plans to plasma in order to be visible for a moment to the player, walking home at the far side of the universe, suddenly smelling food almost as the familiar door about to dream again. And sometimes the player believed the universe had spoken to it through the zeros and ones, through the electricity of the world, through the scrolling words on a screen at the end of the dream. And the universe said, I love you. And the universe said, you have played the game well. And the universe said, everything you need is within you. And the universe said, you are stronger than you know. And the universe said, you are the daylight. And the universe said, you are the night. And the universe said, the darkness you fight is within you. And the universe said, the light you seek is within you. And the universe said, you are not alone. And the universe said, you are not separate from every other thing. And the universe said, you are the universe tasting itself, talking to itself, reading its own code. And the universe said, I love you because you are love. And the game was over, and the player woke up from the dream. And the player began a new dream, and the player dreamed again, dreamed better. And the player was the universe, and the player was love. You are the player. Wake up. Okay, those were some deep, insightful words there. Unless there's anything more. Oh. It's just the credits. Hmm. I'm not sure if I really need to see those. I think I should just press escape and go out. And we're back. We've got the dragon egg. So for now, I guess that's the end of the episode. I'm going to put one more episode out of Minecraft Survival, and then that'll be it. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.